Hello, it's Anna Mason. In this video, I'm going to show you the process I went through to paint these gorgeous hollyhock flowers, which I painted fairly large at 50 by 68 centimetres or 20 by 27 inches. I'd photographed this flower way back in 2009 when I'd been visiting a garden that was open to the public. It had sat on my to paint list for way too long. So I finally got to it this year after a wait of nearly eight years on my computer's hard drive. Because I painted it so large, I would guess it took around eight full eight hour days to complete. That's if I'd been able to spend that uninterrupted time on it. In reality, it spent over three months on the easel with me grabbing the odd weekend or afternoon on it. With it taking so long, I couldn't film it here in the video studio, but I did take photos as I went so that I can show you the process I went through. I was working on illustration board, which is lovely and smooth textured, and I began, as always, with a really detailed, accurate drawing. Then I applied a really pale wash of the right sort of colour to each of the different colour areas within the flower and its foliage. This way I can begin to map out what colours go where, which is important with a flower like this, which contains so many variations in colour, from purples to pinks and even a gorgeous silky grey area of reflection on the lower petals. Even at this early stage, I left little gaps through to the white illustration board, where there would need to be pale flecks of pollen on the petals. Just look how messy it is, but it's exactly how it should look at this stage. I used a size 11 and size 8 brush to work on the larger patches of colour at this stage and also the size 5 which is the biggest one in my standard set but still really quite small with hairs around 1.5 centimetres long and I used my standard little palette with relatively small mixes of paints perhaps just a little bit larger than I usually use when I work on my initial washes. The next stage was to mark out some of the darkest tones or values within the flowers on the veins using a smaller brush. Key to my technique is to make sure that the layer underneath is dry first so that you keep total control of the marks that you make. With a few key areas of darkest tones painted, it then became easier to see how dark to take bigger areas of the flowers. So I worked on them next with a size 5 brush, again ensuring that the layer underneath was dry first. With the bigger patches of petal darkened, I again went in with a smaller brush to add further darker detail like the veins. And I also made sure at this stage that I was still working around and leaving gaps in my paint where the flecks of pollen were. The way we perceive the tone or value of something depends upon the tones that we see around it. So having spent some time darkening the petals, it was easier to then work on the very detailed centres. First working with the subtle lightest tones, before again going in to apply another layer, this time with my treble zero brush to work on the darker details there. Next I worked to darken and add detail to the foliage, which had the effect of darkening the painting overall and made it easier to then work on the darker unopened flowers around the edge of the main blooms, using my smaller brushes to add plenty of detail. Then it was time to do further darkening with an extra layer to some of the darkest tone areas within the main blooms. With all that darkening done, it was now time to reassess the lightest parts of the painting again and darken them just a fraction so that the contrast levels looked correct. I began by darkening the little tiny patches of pollen with some very watery paint, working carefully with my tiny brush and then using my bigger size 5 brush to again apply washes gently over the bigger light areas on the petals. Of course, the layer underneath was dry, so by working very gently, this watery layer I now applied could sit on top of the layers underneath, including where there were some vein details, without disturbing those markings underneath. And with these final tonal adjustments done, I called it a day, or rather eight. Although it looks pretty real, if we take a look at the photo I was working from and compare it to the final painting, you can see that it's not an exact match. I've used artistic license to remove holes from the leaves and I've enhanced the contrast levels a little to make more of a feature of the details and get a final result I was really pleased with. Attempting a complex painting like this at this scale can be really daunting, but I hope this video has helped give you the confidence to try something like this by showing you that there were no special bits of equipment and walking you through the stages I worked through.
And if you know anyone, including yourself, who might like this hollyhock to brighten their home, it's available now as a limited edition print in my online shop. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends. And if you'd like to take a free full length video class from me, please visit animationart.com where you can find loads more resources to help you pick up your brush and paint the way you've always wanted. Thanks for watching. My book, The Modern Flower Painter, is available now in French, Italian, Chinese, Russian, Czech, and of course, English. So hopefully there's an edition for you.